ะครับเอาละครับลำดับต่อไปนะครับมาพบกับด้านของอีกหนึ่งท่านนะครับผมกับหัวข้อที่ว่า advantage QLIPP นะครับ The Data Advantage in Product Development นะครับและก็ตอนนี้นะครับขอเสียงปรบมือต้อนรับนะครับดรดอนนี่โชนะครับ Co-Founder of QLIPP Singapore ครับผม Ladies and Gentlemen please welcome ดรดอนนี่โชฮัลโหล So my name is Tony. I'm from the company called Clip. So Clip is a device that you put onto your racket, and when you play, it tells you how well you're performing. But but today it's not about me. It's actually about you, about you as the startup, as the co-founder, as a product owner in our company. And uh, I was here over the the last few days, and we saw a lot of energy, a lot of uh, youth people, a lot of young people, and uh, everybody was really excited about the event, entire event, which is really great. But one thing that is good to do is this. Uh, by we are we are actually nearing the end of the event, and uh, towards the end, it's actually pretty good to really take a step back and really rethink about the product, the people you have met, the investors you have met, the uh, the companies and the other other startup founders that that you met during this event. So essentially, it is really to think about the products, really to rethink about what your product is doing. The product offering that you're providing and the problems that you're trying to solve. So, in this very simple uh, sharing session that I'll be providing, I'll be giving you five very basic questions, and these five questions hopefully will help you hone the way you think about your product. It has helped me a lot throughout the years when I was building some of the products that I was doing, and uh, hopefully this will really be helpful for you during your startup journey as well. So, the first question. Is this what is then the problem that you are solving? I believe this concept has been drilled down to you many, many times over these three, four days. But as an engineer myself, I, I cannot understress this this concept. And why? As entrepreneurs, we are all building builders. We love to build things. We love to execute. We love to act. But the thing is this: sometimes before we act, we really want to know what problem our product is actually trying to solve. And it goes back to this, and only when we know what is the problem that we're trying to solve, then can you really quantify the pain points, or rather, what what the pain points are. For example, are you really saving them money or saving them time? So only until you know what is exactly the problem you are trying to solve, then can you quantify this amount. And which leads me to the second point, the second question, which is how much the client is willing to pay. In order to use your service, so we are entrepreneurs. We are all very, very passionate. We knock on doors to get people to talk to us, and 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 especially in this part of the world, we are all generally very polite. We don't say no, and we will always give an audience to people that knock on our doors. And the thing is, this uh, they are always very welcoming. They will always hear what we have to say. But once we ask them, how much are you willing to pay for it, or are you willing to pay for this product or this service? Usually we, we they don't really say no, but they just disappear. So you don't hear from them anymore. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably know about it. Yeah, you do, you don't really hear from them anymore. And when you try to probe a bit more, they just try to be a, a bit evasive here and there. But this this question is especially important because it helps you quantify this amount, which is a price point. So right now over here you have the pain point of the customer, and this over here is the price point that the customer is willing to pay. If this price point is too low or too high, if it's too high, you know that the value to customer isn't really there. If it's too low, you have to think about your own cost. I get, to, I get to that later. But then you have to know whether what is the price point that the customer is ultimately willing to pay. And other than this price point, there is the cost of switching, which is the it may be the current way that they are doing things. It may be competitors. It may be the incumbents. But ultimately, what we want to do is how much value are we really adding to the customer? And and to me, that is essentially what a startup is for. A startup ultimately has to add value to the customer by solving their problems. So essentially, that is to me what what startup is all about. And all this leads me to the third third question, which is who am I solving this problem for? So some people call it market segmentation, product differentiation. So uh, for me, it is really going back to the value for the product that I'm building and for the problem that I'm trying to solve. Which customer then achieves the maximum 
amount of market value. And, 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 we, and I, I saw yesterday many of you guys were in the, uh, in the startup boot camp as well. You were guys who were doing the, uh, the uh, so-called the... Uh, this is very similar to the beach hit strategy, whereby we, we have certain customer buckets and we try to pick the customer segment that is most applicable to you. So just a very, very simple case as well. We go back to this. So for example, I have customer A, customer B. So for the same product, for the same product, for different customer segments, they actually have very, very different pain points. Just from this, we know that customer B is not really a very good, so-called, uh, so not a very good product fit for yourself because their pain point is very low and their willingness to pay is so, so you know that this is not out of the question. But let's look at C. You have a slightly lower pain point, maybe similar willingness to pay, there's a thinner value. So for this, in this very, very simple case, between A and C, which one may seem to be a better fit? Actually, actually we don't know yet, because there are still many, many variables that we have yet to find out. One big question we want to ask is, what is the market size? Which is this. So right now we have this. Customer A has a market of 10,000. Customer B, um, uh, sorry, C, market of 1 million. So you, 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 from this sequence of asking questions and getting the answers, you start to be able to quantify the way you size up the market a lot better. But still, it is not sufficient for us to really decide A or B or C. What is one thing that we need to know? Which brings me to the next point, which is how much does it really cost for you to get your product to the customer? So whether you are B2C or B2B, there is always the cost that, involve, that is involved in you being able to get the product from your side to the end of the customer side. So for example, if you are doing B2C, it will be the cost of uh, advertising, sponsorships, or logistical costs, or distributor, retail price, or retailers. So all these people will be getting a margin out of it. And uh, if you are from B2B, of course you have agents that will, that will take a cut in between, in between and, and all these are all costs that are related to distribution. And to put it in more into context, so for example, based on, and, and we are all very, we are all startups, we have very, very lean marketing dollars. So based on the marketing dollars that we have access to, so assuming that based on the distribution cost, we are only able to hit 1% of the market share. Based on the market, 1% of the market share, we calculate, we have, imagine we calculated a lifetime value per customer of 1,000. From this, we know that the market value of customer A is 100,000. So this is a very, very simple example of how we can really calculate so-called market share based on the customer. Let's look at the other customer, which is C. So let's assume that customer C, they are actually based in the US. Your product is heavy, it is, heavy, it is harder to ship your product over there. It's just how you, you're not familiar with the market and it's just the cost of distribution over there is just basically higher. And because of that, you realize that your market share is a lot lower. Your lifetime, and because of the cost being higher, your mar margin is lower and so your estimated market size will also be lower. So using such a, such a very, very simple analysis, you can really zone down the segment which then will be the proper market segments to, to look out for. One, one, one option that many people may think is, uh, yeah, why not I just go after both A and C? So the, the, the answer is always this. If, it, if it's possible you, to build one that meets both, of course you do that. But the, the reality of it is that it is often very, very hard because different segments of the markets, they, they look out for different things and we are all startups. We, we probably have one-man teams or two-man teams running the whole shop and with such limited resources, it is always, always better, in my opinion, to really focus, focus on just one first, one customer segment, get it out for them, make sure that, or rather, try as much as possible to be one of, one of the market leaders for that segment, and if you are really covered for segment, segment A, then you can look at C, D, and E. So this is just my opinion. And uh, the final question that we have is, so of course we, we go for, let for, assuming you go for, customer A, the final segment will be that of how much does it cost for me to build the solution? So, of course, uh, when it comes to cost, you have both the, uh, 
you, if, if you are doing hardware, you have the uh, manufacturing cost, you have the more cost, everything. If you are software, you will be the product development cost and also the ongoing cost of maintaining the, the product. So it really depends on how, what kind of product that you are building. But when we, again going back to this, you have the fixed cost, variable cost. As much as possible, this will be your rental. The fixed cost or manpower, it will always be, it shouldn't vary very much. But what you always play about is your variable cost. Why? Because the aim of every startup is always to go to scale. And once you're able to go to scale, the aim is always for the variable cost to go down as low as possible. And when you have scale, your distribution cost will also go down, which means your margin will go higher. So that's always the aim that, or rather that's always one of the uh, ways that we always try to measure the, uh, the, the, the mechanics of how this works. But uh, after these five questions, there's one important thing. Th these five questions, they are not to be answered sequentially, meaning that you won't be able to answer question one, question two, three, four, five, one by one. Uh, whereas, in, in fact, all five should be always considered as a whole whenever you're approaching a certain product or, or a product segment or customer segment. And you won't have the answers all at one shot. So we are essentially trying to find a product market fit. So meaning that there's you have a product in mind already. So your, what is the problem that your product is solving? What is the problem it's solving? And then you find the right market that's willing to pay money for the problem they are solving. After you get these two correct, then you try to find the right team in order to build the right product to get to the right customers that want to solve the problem. So this is then the, how, the way that, or rather one of my favorite slides on being able to find the product market fit. And when we have these three coming together, and, and again, we, it is not the iterative, it is not the one-off process. It is always a iterative, iterative process. We go through this one day at a time, day by day, week by week, month by month. The earlier speaker was talking about engaging with your customers, engaging with people all the time. Why? Because what you know today is going to be outdated very, very soon, very, very fast. And the more you talk to people, the more you know what people are looking out for. And the big thing is this. This is one of the biggest realizations is that today is actually the day you know least about the product. Why? Because you're going to know more about your product tomorrow, next week, next month, in the next six months, based on the people you meet, the customers you serve, the team you're working with, the engineering that you're going through. So today is actually the least you know about the product. And for you to make a lot of decisions today and not change them further down the road, it's not that much of a good strategy. Whereas what you need to do is you need to be a bit more agile to make maybe minor tweaks, but you need to understand this, that today really you know very, very little about your product and you, day by day, week by week, month by month, you're going to know, know more and more and that's how you try to get the product market fit between you and the customers. And finally, uh, this is a, a so-called summary slide. This has all the five questions that I, I hope that if you have the time, we'll go and consider to to really look through and, and think about the product, think about what you're solving, think about who is going to buy a product, how much they're going to buy it for, how you're going to get the product over to them, and what your costs are. Then when you have this cost structure out, you will be able to understand whether do you really have the business case, do you really have a, a, a so-called plan, a ability to so-called raise money to get money to build a team in order to build the product for the customer. So this is my final slide, which, sorry, which is really end of the day, we need to think about the product and the five questions. So I'm happy to take any questions from the floor if there are any. No? Okay, no? <laughs> oh, yeah, sir. Yes. Why is there, is, is there any model that you know, yes. sustainable. Uh, you mean for... For, uh, for the I, service I, like Grab. Uber. I understand your point. So your, 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 your question is that for, for certain uh, so-called models that, that, that go by expanding the, their user bases and not, not, not bothering so much about the mechanics of profit and loss, uh, is that any revenue model or not? Uh, it, it is a very hard question for me to answer because... Uh, so please take a seat. Because, because basically, I, I don't really know myself. But one thing is true. It has proven to work for certain models, 
for certain companies, for example, uh, for example, at that time, Google and Facebook, they were not profitable for the longest time. And it was only doing recently, or rather recently, maybe in the fi last five, ten years that they really found the right revenue model to do, to do it and really to grow. Even YouTube. YouTube wasn't profitable for really the longest time. And in fact, in the end, uh, it was ac acquired by, uh, by Google and we'll make it, yeah. And WhatsApp acquired by Facebook. So I would say that there is a model that for that to happen. But I must really say this very clearly. It is not the normal case. <laughs> so how many Googles or Facebooks or Grabs are there in the world? I think 20. So for you to be one of the 20 is, is really very hard. So I would, I, personally, I would think that, yes, it is possible, but I wouldn't take it as the recommend, or rather I wouldn't take it as the recommended way for a company to grow or to, to raise money or what. But I would, I, I'm still a bit more traditional in the sense of, but I still like to have a company that makes some revenue, that makes some profit, in order to show that, okay, we are really serving a group. So companies like that, yeah, they grow by user basis, which is great. Yeah, and now, I mean, they're, 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 in parts of, parts of the world, they have really uh, been able to get rid of some, some of the competitors, which I think they are really progressing somewhat in the right direction. Uh, yeah. I hope it answers your question. Uh, any other questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Dr. Doniso. Thank you very much.